All right, so we're gonna have to do this in one, and uh, we're, we're we're gonna have to get into into spoilers because <laughs> there's just there's just too much going on with this film for me to stay spoiler free. So we're gonna we're gonna get into some spoilers. I am driving to get some food, so I thought, hey, why don't you uh, <laughs> why why don't you join me? You know what I'm saying? I got to see this uh, early. I went to the October 30th, like, Fandango early access thing, you know? So I got the chance to see this early, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this in one because it's really loud at my apartment. <laughs> There's, like, painting or some shit going on. Anyways, anyways. Um, so I love, I love The Shining. The Shining is one of my favorite films of all time, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Stanley Kubrick is my favorite filmmaker of all time so i was very curious about this film dr sleep especially because i never i've never read the book dr sleep and i find mike flanagan to be a, a a really exciting filmmaker with a lot of potential now this film uh right away i i love i love the cinematography of of this of this film you know it's got this like milky hazy uh you know, slightly diluted sort of color palette going on that deals with a lot of grays and washed out whites, you know. Uh, there's a very creamy, just dreamy look. <laughs> uh, very dreamy Crayola look to the color palette that I really dig. Uh, the, the cinematography and the color palette is such a way that it's like, it's almost as if like at any moment, some some kind of haunting could happen you know like any corridor any front door any open space could be haunted based just off the color palette and the cinematography so i think that's quite extraordinary but um so cinematography wise i think it's great i think the the, the, the score was fine it was it was it was fine you know did what need to do uh i wouldn't exactly rave about it or say that it was bad i thought the score was fine um, the acting was fine for the most part. No one stood out, but nobody was terrible, so acting was solid. Um, I think, you know, I think I'm just going to get down to it. The, the, the main things that bugged me. Number one, uh, so they will show scenes, they'll show sequences, like scenes from The Shining, um, but they're like recreations. So like for example, you know the moment where uh, Jack Torrance the moment where Jack Nicholson he he has the he has the axe right and he like he like he he makes a hole in the door and then on the other side we see uh, Shelly's reaction, you know his wife's reaction. Okay. Well, we, we we see we see that scene from the shining and dr. Sleep, but like <laughs> it's, it's a recreation of the scene with like like new cast members, you know what I'm saying or uh, there's there's a sequence where um, Where Ewan McGregor's character Danny is talking to his father at the hotel in the third act but like it's you know Jack Nicholson's character is being played by this totally different character, or uh, 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 Jack Nicholson's character from The Shining is being being played by a different actor. You know Jack Torrance is being played by a better, by a different actor. Sorry, <laughs> a lot of multitasking going on right now. But um, those scenes did not work for me, and I get why he chose to do them. Well, like at the very beginning, we see the legendary sequence of Danny on his tricycle you know you know and he's like driving his bike down all the highways or down all the the hallways and corridors right <clears throat> um like i get why he chose to recreate scenes from the shining with new actors but in my personal opinion those moments just did not work and they took me out of the film and i think the reason for that is because these scenes and there's numerous scenes so these scenes that are recreations of moments from the shining i think the reason why they don't work is that it's like <laughs> uh, these scenes these recreation moments are of a lesser quality than the original scenes from the shining you know what i'm saying like i don't know i i just wish that like when danny was looking through the doorway 
I wish that we actually cut to the literal scene from the from the original movie, not some re some Mike Flanagan recreation. I didn't really care for those moments. Unfortunately, they just didn't work for me. They just didn't work for me. I'm not saying that he should have went uh like a CGI a CGI right. No, I'm not saying that he should have went like a CGI route like in Rogue One. <laughs> um, uh, with Tar whatever that character's name is. I can't think of his character. Like, when they have the CGI face, Leia right. I'm not saying that they should have did that, but, um, I don't know. I just wish they actually used the scenes from The Shining. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And, um, what's another thing that bugged me? Um, the film wasn't scary. And I know that the director has said that, like, you know, the original Shining is... It doesn't have traditional scares. But here's the thing. The original Shining, to me, is a horror film uh, that is effectively scary, okay? No, it, it's not full of jump, jump scares and, and gore, and it doesn't have traditional style scares that you would find in today's horror films. But The Shining is still a very scary film, in my opinion. And... This new movie, Doctor Sleep, is not scary in any regard. Um, I would almost say that like this, this new film isn't even really creepy per se. It's really just this film has such a hypnotically dreamy, disturbing, gothic atmosphere. You know, like all the moments, like all the scary moments from Harry Potter. Um, like the Harry Potter film series. I feel like this movie is more closer to that. <laughs> um, like, uh, the, to be honest with you, this movie is more of like a... kind of ominous, sort of like supernatural drama than, than like a horror film. It's really interesting. I enjoyed the film. Um, it's just like, it's, it's not scary. It's not necessarily creepy. Um... There are some moments in the film that I think are are, are are eerie, but I wouldn't say that the movie overall is creepy or scary by any means. Uh, again, I, I find this movie to be more of a really interesting supernatural um, thriller uh, with some horror elements sort of sprinkled in. Um, by the way, it was really nice seeing Cliff Curtis because uh, he's like uh, a really underrated actor, in my opinion. A really fine actor. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I found the film to be a little... Like, there were a few moments that kind of made me roll my eyes a little bit. For example, we have all these, like, villainous characters that, like, suck the life force out of people. I just, um, some of that shit... A, a lot of this movie I found to not only be surprisingly pretty predictable, but... It just didn't really impact me that deeply, to be honest with you, you know? I wasn't, like, frightened of this movie. Uh, there wasn't, like, numerous scenes, if any, that, like, blew my mind or anything, you know? Uh, there's nothing in this film that I felt compelled to, like, oh, my God, I gotta research this when I get home. Oh, my God, this scene makes me want to, oh, I can't wait to tell this person about this scene because, oh, yeah, this isn't one of those kind of movies, but... Oh, my God. Let me try recording this one more time. Okay, sorry, my camera just died. It's a long story. Anyways, the the film, I think from a technical standpoint, from a production from a from a production standpoint, I think the film uh, that's where it really earns its stripes and colors. Like um, any sets, you know, any moments with CGI, I think I think are done like really brilliantly. You know, um, for example, there's. Uh, there's, there's a moment where uh, Rebecca Ferguson, her character, whose name is um, like Rose the Hat or something, her character literally like fro like flies, like like Doctor Strange style, like flies like out of her body and like like orbiting the Earth and like flying down the Earth and like like there's fantastic moments like that that are done really really well. Um, and by the way, uh, Rebecca Ferguson as uh, Rose the Hat. I thought she was fucking awesome. I loved her as Rosa Hat. I thought she was sexy, badass, adorably evil. Um, I loved her little catchphrase that was like, um, 
oh hi there you know <laughs> I, I thought all that was great I, I really loved her really loved her in the film um, also I don't know why I don't know why I, I had to like bear uh, I had to really search for this chick I don't know why but her name is just like buried uh, on IMDB so I'm not sure why that is well this focus okay the chick at the very top the chick at the very top the black chick right there okay who plays Abra Stone I believe her name is Kylie uh, Curran okay she's like it's Ewan McGregor and it's her it's like those are the two main stars of the movie <laughs> Cliff Curtis is in there for a little bit kind of illogically like the sequence where Cliff Curtis agrees to shoot those people I was like <laughs> like he he got behind that concept a little bit too easy too easily <laughs> for my taste like really like uh like i don't know uh, they, they really they were overreaching um with the execution of cliff curtis's character i don't know <laughs> i don't know if cliff curtis was a, a real life character version of that character I, I don't know that that person would have made those decisions so quickly i don't know that that person would be side by side shooting with ewan mcgregor so easily um but anyways uh but yeah yeah that little girl i thought she was really solid you know um not overly impressive and not terrible but i thought she was solid but um and then the third act when we get to the overlook hotel the way that they had the overlook hotel look uh, and sound and a lot of the, the ghostly images that we get from there uh, like seeing like all the main spirits like huddled to together standing over Ewan McGregor like shots like that I think are just simply fantastic I think the last shot of the film um, with uh, Kylie Curran where she walks into the bathtub uh, with the dead old with the dead older woman and she closes the door you know and it cuts to you know uh, directed by Mike Flanagan Oh, the ending! Oh, the ending is so nice. Um, and while not scary, just the horror imagery is just done so well from a technical standpoint. So well, such precision in the way that the horror imagery is crafted here. And um, yeah, you know, this is not one of those movies where I was just like, you know, I wasn't mind blown by this movie. There wasn't numerous scenes where I was like oh my god when I get home I can't wait to research that I can't wait to watch all these interviews about this because you know I uh, like this wasn't one of those movies this movie this movie didn't get me like that I'm not really interested in watching like multiple interviews to dig deeper I'm not interested in doing any deep dives about this movie um I, I wasn't mind blown by it I wasn't scared by it you know I wasn't like overly shocked by it you know but I gotta say this is a really solid film. I mean, personally, I didn't think it was overly great, but I didn't think it was terrible. Um, I thought it was a good, a good movie. I I thought it was essentially about a seven out of ten. Hold on a second. All right, All right bro, thank you. Wait, no, it's perfectly fine. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was a seven. I thought it was about a seven out of ten. A 7 out of 10. I think it's good. Don't think it's great. Don't think it's shitty. It's like right in the middle for me. I think it's good. And um, I, I think the filmmaker... It's clear to me that this filmmaker... I was watching Haunting of Hill House last night. And uh, a review on that coming soon. But uh, it's clear that he has a lot of potential. He has such an eye um, for what he does with the camera. And uh, there's a lot of potential there. I'm very excited by this filmmaker. But this movie, I just gotta be honest with you. I just thought it was good. Um, I, I think the most impressive things about this film outside of the production is the fact that like he successfully found a way to make a film that on one hand is a love letter to Stephen King and the novels. Uh, but at the same time, it's also his own unique vision you know um of, of this story but it's also paying homage and emulating uh stanley kubrick's film so it's kind of like all three things happening at once and the fact that he was able to mix in those three ingredients and to do it successfully competently um it's pretty incredible so yeah i i think this is a uh 
I think it's a good movie. I'm gonna give it about a seven out of ten on it. But what what did you think about this film? Um, let me know down below. I need to get back before my food gets cold. <laughs> oh my god, doing this review was like a, a bit of a mission because uh, there's all kinds of shit going on at my house. It's just too loud there. But uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Okay. What are your thoughts? Let me know. I'm out of here.